I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll get a chance to see Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings as they take on Phillip Rivers and the LA Chargers. With that, let's get out to Southern California with the call from Los Angeles. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, under hazy, overcast L.A. skies, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Los Angeles Chargers. From up top, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles Davis, as always, with me as well. And CD, defenses better be on their toes in this one because we got two quarterbacks who love to throw the football, and they throw it very well. Over 4,000 yards each in the previous season. So what you're saying is, if you're a defender, hope you prepared properly. Hydrated, stretched, be on your toes, as you said, because the ball's coming your way. in purple in 2019 Dan Bailey to get us started and we are underway in Southern California this one taken from the seven and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line the Chargers all-time passing leader Phillip Rivers who's been their starter since 2006 trotting onto the field and I'll tell you what, he may be just a couple of years from 40, but he can still do it. You look back to 2018, some people were whispering MVP and Rivers in the same breath with what he did in that campaign, especially impressive in two December primetime victories, one against the Steelers, one against the division rival Chiefs, and although things ended not quite how they wanted in the playoffs to New England, Phillip Rivers still feels like he has a lot left in the tank. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. If you're going to talk about great players with the Chargers, you have to include their center, Mike Pouncey, a four-time Pro Bowler. He and his brother Marquise with the Pittsburgh Steelers, they were the Pro Bowl centers for the AFC in 2018. Hey, cut. Block 11! Watch the run! Watch the run! Watch the run! <laughs> Rivers now on second down. And to the right side here, it's Allen. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact and he'll go deep. Rivers now to throw on first down. Throw right side, complete to Williams. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 12 more yards there and another first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. To throw again. Rivers. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. You used to have a coach who's tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. 
They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Here's Rivers. And a big loss here as he's taken down. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. But likely not for long as they're in punt formation to kick it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Vikings with Kirk Cousins leading the way. Cousins surprisingly efficient in his first season as a member of the Vikings. He hit on better than 70% of his passes, second only to Drew Brees, and was actually just the sixth ever NFL quarterback to finish a season above that 70% mark. A first down throw for Cousins. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On first and ten, Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. But it's going to be second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Cousins now from the 50. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Now they face a third and 10 after back to back incompletions. Cousins. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On now to kick it away is the punter, Matt Wild. Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions, just string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. On first and ten, Rivers. That is incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Rivers. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Right. 
line of scrimmage. The 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, Rivers. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. after a pickup of nine. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So we've hit halftime here, and as we expected, looking at the clock, a very quick first half of play as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to... There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Scoring in our first half. What will the second half bring as we are now back underway? Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. First down, here's Cousins. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Cousins now to throw on first down. And this is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. So a line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. So from 2nd 10, it'll now go to 2nd 15. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, 2nd and 15. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. And while we're seeing more and more of these plays come from the college game into the NFL, and that one, it was run with great success, how about the evolution of the offensive linemen? We're seeing less and less big guys who can't move and more and more guys who are a lot more mobile and can get out in front of that type of a play. Cousins from the gun on third. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Cousins to his tight end Rudolph for a Viking first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Get ready. 
And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Cousins gives way to Cook. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. This defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far, they're not putting up much of a fight. If they don't get a stop here soon, this game could be over for them. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. And they give this time to the tailback. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Second down, Cook. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. This is Cook. Well, he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And Bailey able to knock it through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24 yard line. Rivers and the Chargers now. Down 3 0. 109 to play. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Back to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. To Gordon, out left. 
five yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. Now the Chargers hustling, trying to get up and get set. He's back to throw. And Allen's got it. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. They're probably about one big play from getting into field goal range. I'd go with a two-deep coverage, make sure my safeties are back to cover all of the field deep. First down now, but the clock continues to move. They'll look to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and now it's second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Here's Rivers. And this one complete to Virgil Green. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And not all W's are created equal, CD. And this one came in.